how to annoy your boyfriend 101. Hey everyone, it's Adrian, and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video. If you guys are new here, click the subscribe button down below and also click the bell right next to the subscribe button. That'll turn on post notifications so you know every single time I upload. And today's post notification shout out goes to Alvira T. If you guys want a notification shout out in my next video, simply click the bell and then comment done when you are done. And if you already have my notifications on, comment done or also anything else you want to say to let me know you have them on. In today's video, I am going to be showing you guys my top favorite and also the top most secretive iOS 11 features. Now, I was actually a little bit late on the iOS 11 train. I simply didn't realize it came out as early as it did. I was slightly embarrassed. I feel like I should be on top of this kind of thing. But the point is that I have iOS 11 now and that is all that matters. And not to mention, there are a lot of features of iOS 11 that a lot of people don't know exist. So in today's video, I will show you guys all of those secret features as well as my favorite new features, kind of how to maneuver them and so on. If you guys didn't know, I have a vlog channel. It's behind the scenes of my everyday, crazy, weird, random life. So you guys should go subscribe to that if you're interested in seeing behind the scenes of my life. The link will be down below and they are also all posted on my main channel on a playlist. So you guys should go binge watch those if you're bored and let me know which one your favorite is and look out for more. I also do post notification shout outs on my vlog channel, so go be sure to subscribe and hit the bell there and you guys will get shouted out. All right, you guys, without further ado, without further ado, I like can't talk today, I don't know why, but without further ado, let's get into it. So obviously, first and foremost, you guys, we have the new feature on iOS 11 that can screen record your phone without it being plugged in. I know if you guys have watched my previous videos, I'm always having it plugged in, screen recording on my laptop, but now I can just do it right here and I have actually added this widget to my control center. I will show you how to do that later on in this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and start recording. I think this is so awesome, obviously for people like me, but also for anyone else who wants to show someone anything on their phone. Now, I will say my number one kind of critique is that it has this red bar at the top. I don't love that for my purposes with these videos, but it's not the end of the world. It doesn't really matter. It's way easier than doing it on my computer and saving the file, etc. So the next secret feature that I don't think a lot of you knew existed because I didn't know. And if I didn't know, then no one knew. Just kidding. But it is actually the ability to enter flyover mode in your favorite cities on Apple Maps. Now you're probably like, what do you mean by that? Well, it was funny. When I first downloaded iOS 11, I actually clicked on Apple Maps and I said, oh, nothing's that different. Okay, it looks pretty much the same, like no big deal. <clears throat> I was mistaken. So they have this really cool mode called flyover mode where you can actually get a virtual 3D tour of your favorite cities in the world. So I'm gonna type in London, England because that is one of my favorite cities ever. You type that in, it gives you the option of flyover. If you click on flyover, it basically takes you to a 3D version of London. Oh my God, and oh, okay, so if you move your phone around, it moves for you. Wow, my hand is really shaky. So that in itself is really cool. Like I'm just looking down on Westminster Abbey. That's unreal. Cause I was just there and that's really cool. But to take that a step further, if you click start city tour, it gives you a straight up 3D tour of London. And it'll do this for any major city. It'll kind of swoop into very important landmarks or buildings and give you the name of those landmarks. And it's awesome. It really feels like you are there, which I think is so cool. The technology of this is just incredible. So as you can see, the 3D buildings don't look perfect, but as they get closer in on them, they start showing more and more detail. So I just thought this was a really, really cool feature. See that building, that's actually what that building looks like. Let's do Los Angeles. Let's flat over it, baby. Okay, so they're obviously showing just downtown, which is cool, but I mean, I don't live downtown, but that's still really cool. Huh, the one thing not accurately represented, the traffic. Oh my God, every single building has a helicopter pad on the top. Another feature that I think is pretty cool on Apple Maps, although I don't think I'd really use it much, is one-handed zoom. So right now, if you wanna zoom, you use two fingers, but if you actually double tap, and then on the last tap, hold your finger on it and swipe your finger up or down, you can zoom in. So you go tap, tap, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. So that's like cool. I don't think I would use it a whole lot, but I guess if you're trying to one-handed zoom, there you go. The next secret feature I thought was so random and cool and totally would come in handy is to have a left-handed keyboard or a right-handed keyboard. So this is mostly, I think, handy if you have like the seven plus or the eight plus and your fingers can't quite reach to the other side if you're trying to text one-handed. So what you do is you click on the smiley face emoji button, but you press and hold. So you use 3D touch, 
press and hold, and then as you can see, it gives you the option of a left keyboard or a right keyboard. So we're gonna push the right, and as you can see, it just kind of squishes the keyboard over a little bit so that you can more easily reach all of the keys. And then the fact that you can do the other side if you're lefty, I just think that's pretty neat and I bet a lot of you didn't know <laughs> that existed. Now, everyone knows that the control center for iOS 11 looks a lot different. Let's take a look at it. So you swipe up and obviously it has a totally different look. All of these things are 3D touch, which I think is so cool. You got your night shift. You got your sound, you got your flashlight, it has like four levels of brightness now, which is pretty cool. You got your timer, which you can just set right from here, which I also think is cool. You got your camera and you can take a selfie, record video. So everything's just a lot more accessible. My favorite part of this control center is the fact that you can turn on cell data right from here because I'm someone who when I go on Wi-Fi I turn off my data altogether so that I'm not like using both. And the other really cool thing is that I don't think a lot of people realize you can actually customize the widgets that are in this control center. Normally what shows up are just these widgets and I added these bottom two. So how you add those is you go to your settings, you go to control center and then you click customize controls and from there you can pretty much add any of these things that you want to add and if you add them up top so say we're gonna add my notes and my magnifier. If you then go to your control center, as you can see, it added notes and magnifier. So I think that's really cool. The next new iOS 11 feature that I'm sure you guys did know existed is that if you take a screenshot on your phone, it now just lets you immediately access and edit and mark up this screenshot. This was a very smart move on Apple's part because I think that usually when people screenshot things, unless they're just saving something for their records, they normally want to immediately use it to either send someone something or show someone something like that. So I think that it is so cool that you can just immediately have the screenshot right here. You can click on it. You can mark it up all you want. You can add text, signature, magnifying, anything like this, an arrow. What? Wait. Oh, that's cool. So there are like dots and you can literally make the arrow go anywhere you want, make it be any color. That is so neat. So that's another really cool feature. It's not so secretive. I think a lot of people figured out that that exists, but one of my favorite features on iOS 11. My next favorite kind of update is on notes itself. So if you guys have noticed, if you go to create a new note, there are so many new things that you can do. You can create a table where you can make a chart, you can add to-do lists, you can change a bunch of things in terms of the type, you can add bullets, dashes, numbers, you can have bold, underline, strike through, any of that kind of stuff. You can add little tasks, step one, step two. This comes in handy for grocery lists or to-do lists because you can simply check them as you are done, which I think is so cool. I did this in the grocery store the other day and Rob was like, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? And I was like, iOS 11, baby. And other than that, you can add a photo right to it. That's really attractive, I know. You can scan documents, add a sketch. You can draw all over yourself. Obviously, there are so many things you can do and you can figure them out and it's awesome. The next thing that iOS 11 added is a password manager. I still wish that this was kind of a better, but basically as a website will prompt you for a password, your phone will have remembered your password if you choose to let it a previous time. So I'm just gonna try to log into this random website. When you click password, you can click on passwords and it'll have remembered your certain passwords. So obviously like I don't have this particular website on it, but pretend it was Google you would have my password right there. You could just click on it and insert it, which I think is actually definitely really cool, but I'm still trying to get to know it to its fullest potential. Let me know if you guys have used this and if you think it's handy. I'm sure it is handy and probably very secure. I know a lot of people who use third-party password apps such as LastPass and things like that, so. I'm curious what you guys think about that one. The next feature that I'm obsessed with is on live photos. You can now select a keyframe from the live photo that you want to be the actual photo. So this happens pretty rarely, but when I was at Playlist Live, this guy took a photo of my friends and I all throwing confetti into the air. Now the live photo wasn't really cute when it actually took because we were kind of blurry. But as we went through the live, we always were like, dang, we wish we could screenshot this because it looks so much cuter, like right in the middle when we're like, <gasps> And so now you can. Here is the actual photo we are talking about. So as you can see, it is like not super cute right there. I mean, it's pretty cute, but there are some cuter moments within that photo. And so what we wish is that we could get a keyframe and now we literally can. So say we wanted that to be the keyframe or that to be the keyframe. It's really easy now to make it the default. 
So that I just think is like so nice because it's cool doing a live photo, especially if you're taking a photo of something with movement like that. The next new feature on iOS 11 is storage and how they lay it out so that it's very easy to manage your storage and to make sure that you aren't running out of storage. Basically it shows a way more specific breakdown of how your storage is being used and it also gives you recommendations. So you can actually set your phone to be like, auto deleting old text conversations. You can have them optimize photos. And it also will show you which apps you never use and which ones are taking up the most amount of data. So you can really manage it a lot better. So as you can see, it's recommending that I optimize my photos and that I auto delete old conversations because I can save 2.81 gigabytes. It also shows me like, for example, GarageBand I never use and it's taking up 1.5 gigabytes. I don't know if I can delete that, but this is just cool because it has a really specific breakdown of kind of every app. So messages, it says old conversations are worth 2.81 of my gigabytes, which means conversations I probably haven't had in like six months to a year or longer. So I just love that it tells you that now. I think that it's so handy and it'll help you free up a lot of space. My next favorite feature is that you can send text with this new feature called Echo. So as you know, if you press and hold the send button, the iPhone has always had these send with slam, loud, gentle, invisible ink. So this is what Echo looks like. It basically sends a ton of text with your same text. And then this is Spotlight, it looks kind of cool. We already had balloons, we had confetti, and we had send with love, lasers, but I don't think, well, we did have fireworks. I don't think we had shooting star, unless we did, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Don't think we had celebration, again, I might be wrong. But my favorite one, for sure, is Echo. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. This is how to annoy your boyfriend 101. The next cool feature for iOS 11 is type to Siri. Now, I find this, feature slightly pointless because I think that Siri's point is to make things more convenient and easy so you can talk to Siri that way you don't have to like type into Google. You can just say, hey Siri, blah, 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 blah. So type to Siri is for people who don't like to talk to Siri out loud and want to type to her. But again, I find it kind of pointless because you could just, if you're gonna type to Siri, you may as well just type into Google, especially because Siri sometimes like isn't even that helpful. So I don't really see the point. And the last feature that I think is really, really cool and I don't think people knew this is called Wi-Fi sharing. So say two people are in an apartment, one person has the Wi-Fi password, the other person does not. If they go onto their phone to try to log into a Wi-Fi, your phone, the phone that has the Wi-Fi password already will then prompt up a message that says, would you like to share this Wi-Fi password with so and so and you can say yes and then they will automatically be connected to the Wi-Fi so this is super nice for people to have really long and confusing Wi-Fi passwords like everyone ever and I believe you probably have to have your Bluetooth on I'm not positive about that but I did think that's really cool and I don't think a lot of people realize that so next time you're with a friend and you need to share a Wi-Fi password try turning on your Bluetooth and seeing if the person with the password gets a prompt on their phone that asks them to share it with you. All right, you guys, so those are my top favorite and some secretive iOS 11 hack, uh, not hacks, oh my God, I'm so used to doing hacks, features. <laughs> Let me know that you guys like this video by giving it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. I will gladly do more videos on stuff like this. I know that the more I have iOS 11 and I'm going to be getting the iPhone 10, the more I have those, the more I will have to share with you. Like this was only a fraction of the features that I found that were really cool. And a lot of them you probably knew and some you didn't know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching me. And remember to check out my vlog channel if you're interested in that. And that's all I got. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.